What's going on guys in the works and we're playing a little bit of Naval Strike today. So this just came out on Xbox One last night. So I fired up the old Xbox which I hadn't used in a while and, and downloaded me some Naval Strike because it's not out yet on PC. It's actually kind of funny because in the last video I made I, I talked about how Naval Strike was going to be BF4 Swan Song. If they didn't get this right I think people were going to just say okay well we're done with Battlefield 4. Uh, we're going to move on. And not only, you know, I think it was less than 24 hours after I made that video, they announced that it was going to be delayed on PC and Xbox One. And I actually thought it was pretty funny. It was almost like they were trolling me. They're like, haha, you want to make a video talking about do or die? We'll show you. We'll delay it. Uh, so we're going to talk about Naval Strike today. Some of my first impressions of it. Because I did play for quite a bit last night. I actually can admit I had a pretty rage-free session. I, I didn't have a lot of problems playing the game. Um, there's still a couple netcode issues out there, I think. I still think there's some stuff they could do to improve that, but, you know, at this point, that's just something we're going to have to live with. But the maps are beautiful. They, they're, they're top-notch in terms of the way the maps are laid out. I think you guys are definitely going to be happy with it. But, you know, I think the question is, was the delay worth it for us PC players with all the problems that the Xbox One and PS4 have? And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, upon release of the, the DLC on both PS4 and then later down the line here on Xbox One, there is some extreme, and I mean extreme rubber banding. And this footage, you may notice it in certain certain areas where I'm just sitting there and stuttering, stuttering, stuttering. I'll point it out here coming up, one that I can recall, but uh, there's a lot of examples of it throughout this entire gameplay of the game just, just bogging down. It doesn't seem to be able to handle whatever is going on. So uh, that's kind of frustrating. So it all, almost makes me wonder that, you know, was the delay actually worth it for us uh, on PC? Because the last thing we need is more problems because we've had plenty of those. You know, we don't, we don't want more of that. So when I saw the delay, I actually, oddly enough, didn't really care that much because I was like, well, at least for once, they're care you know they're they're putting an effort to promote quality you know they're actually trying to fix a bug instead of saying here here you go have fun uh, which is it's different than the past patches yeah it's a little it, you know it sucks that we have to wait like a couple more weeks to get it but uh, at least they're trying to give us some quality and i actually thought i killed that guy that's an example of some of the like latency i don't know if you can tell on this but that particular instance it was stuttering really really bad there was a little hiccup there too and another one right here so uh there's definitely some hiccups throughout this video and that's something that's been plaguing both uh both the ps4 and the xbox one uh, but like I was saying, you know, I actually think the delay may have been a good thing. I mean, it, it sucks as players. We want to get our hands on it. We want to actually play it. But, you know, at least they're trying to not give us something that's crappy. And, oh, there's some there's some major stuttering right there. So, uh, in terms of the delay, you know, maybe, maybe it was for the best. But let's talk about my first impressions. Because, like I said, I did play for quite a bit last night just to sort of get my feet wet, get an idea of how these maps play. Um, this one right here is Operation Mortar. It's probably my favorite one. Um, I'm having some sort of conflictions between this and the sub base level, which I think that one is Wave Breaker, I believe, is the is the one with the sub base. Those two are excellent maps, and I mean they are excellent. As you see me pick up a very rare multi kill on the Xbox One. Can't say I've pulled that off too many times, but uh, these two maps are probably my favorite. And we'll transition to, into some of the sub base level uh, here in just a second, but. This one plays really awesome because it's kind of got the central area where it's got the old cannons that you can lob. And I don't know, has DICE ever fired a cannon? Because I actually have. I've, I've actually been in an area where we were shooting off some old 1600s cannons, and it was a lot of fun. But I can tell you guys from my experiences and just from, you know, if you went on the internet and Googled cannon, 1600s cannon fire, they don't shoot like the way they do in this game. I don't know what it is. The cannons just lob. They just drop instantly. I, I know that's probably a balancing thing, but I, I just thought it was kind of funny because they're more of like a, a little gimmick in the game, which which is fine with me. I mean, they're fun to use. So, um, But they're definitely not historically accurate, if you ask me. Uh, but this is that map I was talking about. We're going to mainly stick to this inside part of it, but if you actually leave the hangar and go outside it's got you know another island because this is built into the side of like a mountainous island and on the outside it's surrounded by water there's a couple little outlying points that you can go to 
this is a really awesome map. I, I've got to say, in terms of map design and in terms of the way these maps play, they work really, really well. Now, for the record, I've mainly been playing Carrier Assault, which is the new game type in Battlefield 4 Naval Strike because it is the, the Titan mode from 2142 brought into Battlefield 4. And, you know, it's a fun game mode, I gotta admit. It is a fun game mode, but there's one thing that I think keeps it from being the definitive game mode, and that is the parachute spawn. So, essentially how this works, it's, it's, it's conquest with a twist. So you need to control each point. So when you control a point that actually controls a, a rocket launcher that shoots, or, you know, a mortar, or whatever you want to call it, a missile base, that you can't destroy, that it's impenetrable, but it control it's controlled by a point. So if you control the point, you control one of these missile bases, which then shoot at their enemy carrier. What this does is it takes health down. So if you look at the screen there to the left, you can see that um, different carriers have different percentages of health left. And for more points you control, the more damage you can do to it. Well, when you get it to 50%, the carrier actually cracks open, and then you can go inside and there's two MCOMs you can plant, and that basically is how you can win, or you can just destroy the carrier. That's always an option. Uh, if you get it down to 0%, you win. So it's a very interesting game type. Unfortunately, unfortunately, after you actually break open the carrier, a spawn, a parachute spawn, opens up above the enemy carrier. So what that allows you to do is each time you die, you can respawn as a parachuter above the enemy carrier, and it's really easy to get in there. And that, to me, sort of ruins it, because it takes away that defensive element. It kind of takes away the, the idea of, okay, you have to hold the line here because our carrier is open. And what you get is it makes it really easy for the enemy team to just overwhelm you once you finally crack it open. So I am not a huge fan of that personally. I think it would be much more exciting if we found a way to sort of alter that. Now, I'm not proposing that we completely remove the parachute spawn, but perhaps it would make more sense if the parachute spawn was further away from the carrier. That way it did create some sort of frontline type scenario as opposed to just having it be sort of a free-for-all where people can just parachute in at will. I don't know. I mean, maybe when we when we finally play a lot of Carrier Assault, we'll realize maybe it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but as it stands right now, I think I would prefer it without it. So you can see the map here. You can kind of see there's two parachute spawns where we can just spawn in right above their carrier. Unfortunately, I think we're about to lose this game because they've got ours planted. Um, but you can see I'm spawning right above it, and then I can just basically run below deck uh, but not before they actually win this particular round. So um, I, I'm, I'm still I'm still out. I think that there is ways to make this work, but this particular way that they have it right now, I think, sort of kills the the competition in this game mode. But overall, I am actually liking Naval Strike. Now, does it change a lot of the issues and performance stuff we've had on PC? I don't know yet. I think it ran pretty good on Xbox One. Minus the stuttering issue, which was completely unrelated to some of the past issues. It's probably just, you know, release day jitters. But overall, Naval Strike is fun. I think it's some of the best DLC we've seen in quite a while. Uh, especially uh, considering that, you know, some of the Battlefield 3 DLCs were just sort of mediocre. So this is definitely the best BF4 DLC. So I think you PC players who haven't had a chance to play it yet will be very excited. Uh, but if you did miss any of my past videos, here's a chance to catch up. I did a video that was I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video talking about the do or die situation with this DLC. And I'm also wrapping up the Wind Waker HD playthrough on my second channel. We just took on the the second to last boss. So if you want to catch up on that, that's a great point to pick up at. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.